Someday when I make it, I'm going to hire a guy to hit me with a blow dart right after every show. <laughs> so that's your dream. That's your dream. If you can make enough money, that's your first hire. Just right in the neck every single show. And of course, I won't know when it's coming. Of Otherwise, I'll be all tense and yeah, looking for it. You don't want to be, yeah. I've been the guy on OfferUp who put something up and then the guy sends me something too low and I'm like, I'll just pay you the same money to break this over your head. How fucking dare you? I've this been there. This is a laptop. I We were trying to sell when my, so my, my girlfriend and I moved in together by accident at the start of the pandemic. When we moved in, she had a, a beautiful cabinet and she goes, she's like, there's no room for this. We have to sell it. I'm like, okay, what, what is it worth? And she's like, well, like, you know, it like costs this much, but I guess you could put it up for like 200 bucks. And I was like, okay, fine. Put it up for 200. And someone was like, would you take 30? I'll burn this thing down for thirty. So I will, do you know what? I, do you know what I wrote back? I said I I will give it to Goodwill before I'll give it to you for thirty. <laughs> yes, uh, you you can't help but get weird. Offer up gets me petty. I get angry. I, I get uh, too prideful. Rage. <laughs> before we keep going, I want to talk about the tea. So for those that are steeping with us at home, because our our listeners steep at home with us. Okay. I love that you looked right down the barrel when I said that. I didn't even know. I guess I knew we were recording, but I was like, maybe we're testing. Maybe I mean, we're, listen, we're rolling we, right through it. We can edit whatever you want if you don't like it. Don't, um, yeah, I don't want my offer up stories online. Oh, we're putting all your offer up. So this is the, I didn't tell you, the podcast is offer up themed. Oh, no. Yeah, I know. Um, but for those steeping at home, we're drinking Bird and Blend Bell's Breakfast, which is a black tea. Uh, it steeps at 212, uh, obviously Fahrenheit, because if you did that Celsius, we'd have problems. Uh, 212 Fahrenheit for about three minutes. That's kind of where you want to be for this one. Um, what do you think? You're not a big tea drinker. Where are not, you at with it? Not a huge tea drinker, but really. Um, so uh, I'm Palestinian, and mm -hmm. we're very, we're very, uh, we're a big tea culture. I was going to ask, is it big tea culture? I don't know. Huge tea culture. Okay. Every meal is is you know followed by some tea. Oh, lovely. You know, little little you ever see a little Turkish tea? Yes. Yeah. So it's uh, the flavors, and so it's like I'm not a huge tea drinker, but as I kind of breathe this thing in and it does remind me of a lot of um uncomfortable dinners i had with uncles and stuff growing up and just weird <laughs> uncomfortable occasions. dinners yeah just stiff you know like it's it's interesting maybe your listeners who have uh relatives who live abroad or somewhere else yeah in a much different culture you know can relate but there are these sort of encounters you have it's very uncomfortable because i don't you're just such a you know, I, I barely speak the language. I, you know, I, I'm looking, I'm a million miles away from home and I'm trying to sort of, you know, navigate through this culture or whatever. And it, it can be a little uncomfortable at times and it just, but a delicious tea. <laughs> Let me just say this. <laughs> I love a you, delicious like, tea. Like it reminds me of some of the worst moments of my life. Great tea. It's a great, I love it. I can hear the shelling of the Israelis right now. Oh but my Lord. We are going to offend so many people within five minutes of this yeah. podcast. That's the name of this game, baby. Here's, this is a question, not to get really deep into politics, but here's, here's a question that I wonder, okay, as, as a, as a Palestinian, yeah. anytime, because I'm Jewish, but I'm not Israeli. Yeah. So anytime someone's like, like, what do you think of the Middle Eastern conflict? Anytime someone says that to me, I always respond with like, I, I am a proponent of israel but i am not supportive of the decisions the government is making mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is that a stance that when you hear that you go fair enough or you go bullshit no i think listen i i think whatever your point of view is and i'm not i'm not I, whatever your point of view is especially if you're jewish and in america it's like everything is colored by so much right your sure. context the way you collide with the universe there's just yeah, so yeah. many things you can't really choose it doesn't really. It, I feel nothing about that argument, or I feel nothing about that that point of view. Yeah. You know, I, I I respect it. I don't really care. I'm jealous of you that you get nine. Like when somebody hears you're Jewish, yeah. There's twenty other things they can ask you about before they get to the Middle Eastern conflict. That's, That's where I'm jealous. That's true. When I say I'm Palestinian, nobody goes, "Tell me about." Uh, baklava. It's always like, so how about the Israeli? It's, it's weird because I always... ask about baklava a lot. You do. You're um, one of the few. <laughs> uh, no, that is really interesting. That's so funny. Yeah. I um, I will say this, and I, I we probably both know the person I'm about to mention, but like after seeing Rami, yeah, uh, I didn't know about. 
I don't, and I, I'm not researched this true, so I may sound like an idiot. The strawberries thing really was like a, a, shocking to me. I don't know. I didn't see that. What's the strawberry thing? Apparently, uh, they have they they there's a huge demand for strawberries in the U.S. and so they've overtaken a lot of areas where Palestine was doing a lot of more interesting, different things and different crops and different culture, and just like bulldoze them for strawberry fields. Really? That, now <laughs> this this was in Rami. I don't know if it's yeah. true. Yeah. Could be, um, I'm sure it's true. I'm sure he's not going to mess up on that. Particular I don't think he issue. would, especially because that the, I thought the show was so good. I don't know if you watched it. But, yeah, um, I caught the first season or two. But here's the thing. And I just can't. Uh, there's two seasons, I believe. Right. Yeah, I, yeah. I can watch one season of any show. And yeah. And I'm and then I'm back to YouTube. I'm not much on TV. You're a big YouTuber. I love YouTube. Interesting. What long. are you? OK, so I don't I'm not good at YouTube. I don't know what to do on there. Yeah. What the hell do I do? You you let it you let it do you. It's gonna take me to the to, to the far right is what it's gonna do. If you let it go long enough, you just start watching like Matt Walsh videos and you know you get Alex Jones. Which I'll tell you what, I've been there before. I've been, oh my <laughs> lord, I've been taken to the I've been dragged to the corners of hell. But I always get out. Here's the thing: <clears throat> if you catch the right, you know you ride the right algorithm wave. Yeah, you can be taken to some beautiful places and see some beautiful things. That you never knew existed out there. For example, do you know what a First Amendment auditor is? No. <laughs> okay, a First Amendment auditor, one of my favorite YouTube wormholes that you can go down, is a guy who just goes to a public place and he turns on a camera and he just s stands there. And his whole thing is, is because you're part of the First Amendment, is you're allowed to film in a public place and he audits whether the area is friendly to the First Amendment or not. And I know this sounds... It sounds... Are you, this is real. This is 100% okay, real. Okay, because I would, I would believe you. It sounds terrible and boring, but let me tell you, the interactions that you see these First Amendment auditors have, it's just amazing. And that'll take you down. Now you're watching dash cam footage in Russia, and it's a... You know, you'll, I've watched dash cam footage in Russia. Dash cam footage in Russia is one of my favorite TV shows. <laughs> If True TV doesn't pick up dash cam footage in Russia. How does it not? Um, it's such a good time. I well, My favorite thing is when you're watching, you never know what's going to happen. But my favorite things in, in, the dash, in that genre of dash cam footage is when you see someone at a stop sign or a, or a street light. And then someone just runs over, throws themselves at the car and falls to the ground. Yeah. And, then, and then the person just points to the dash cam and then they're like, oh. You got to respect the hustle when you see a hustle at the end of the day. I'm but into it. You got to get a dash cam, too. Look, listen, if there's anything anybody can take from this podcast, get aside from cam. how delicious this tea is, yeah, get yeah. a dash cam. Do you have a dash cam? I, I do have a dash cam. You do? Yeah, yeah okay. I do. All right. Because I, I, I was about to say, I own, I bought a dash cam. It wasn't very expensive. I bought a dash cam, haven't installed it. It's so worth it. And it's like, I don't know. I got mine for like 40 bucks or whatever on Amazon. And we just, in LA especially. How do you install? I don't know. I got to take it somewhere probably. Yeah. No, you can, you should, it should be. It should be just like a, isn't it just like a thing you stick? Mine is just like a thing you I stick and it, it records. Oh, it's so easy. Oh, after the show, I'll help you install yeah, your yeah, dash cam. Yeah. <laughs> That's, I didn't want to tell you. So the reason I asked you to be on here is because I need help with my dash, with cam. dash cam. And uh, no, I will tell you this. So I regularly talk about how. Uh, you have to do a lot of terrible shows in Los Angeles yeah. to get to some g better ones. Of course. And I used to tell uh, a buddy of mine who doesn't do comedy, he didn't get it. He goes, they all must be fun. I go, they're, they're not. Yeah. They're not at all. No, not at all. Uh, but I regularly think about the time that we met, which I believe was at the Black Box Theater show that uh, Scherzer was throwing, yeah. doing, putting on. I don't know what the right verb is for no, that. I think I'm okay with all three of the yeah, things. Yeah, uh, lovely. And I, I literally have never had more fun. That's the one in Malibu? Uh, no, or, oh, we no, did one yes, on, yeah. in uh, West LA. Yeah, that one was really fun. And I, I was just that. like, I, I was like, this dude's great. And after that, I became a fan. I was just like, you're great. Comedy shows are very interesting, especially as, as it's like you have to do some really bad ones to do good ones. And then if you do enough good ones, you then start doing bad ones again. Because you, what happens is you just fall down to the bottom of a totem pole that's a little Correct. bit higher. Yep. So it's like I started out you know, doing bad shows. And then I got good shows. And then recently I started working at the comedy store. I was just telling you beforehand. And now I'm doing the worst spots in the yeah. best comedy club in the world. And then I'm, you know, you're just constantly, I say the highs and lows, they, they, it all starts to even out a little bit, right? They, mm. the, the highs are, and the lows are less far apart. Sure. But they're, you still experience them. You're still going up and down. There's never a not an up and down. You know, do you, do you know Langston Kerman? Yeah. One of my favorite things I ever heard was I, do you remember the old uh, Hollywood Hotel? Um, 
the shows. They were like terrible. I miss them so much. Yeah. Such a good time in my life. I mean, oh boy. Uh, I was doing one and uh, there was one, one audience member and they were at the bar and they, it was clear they were not there for the show. It was clear they were dealing with some other stuff in their life and they were just at the bar. And Langston was headlining, and that's a really strong word because there was one audience member. But Langston is headlining, and he gets up on the mic and looks around, and he goes, mm, "No matter how far I get in my career, can't get away from these. You can't get. You really can't. You yeah." Can't. And I was like, and I laughed so hard because I was like, "You can't." Dude. No, I did. I did a show two nights ago. I was just I I closed a show in the in the belly room of the comedy store, and it was two people in the front, two people in the very back. And an empty crowd and nothing, nothing in between. What, and but you, those are the most fun I find now. Now he, I find that fun. Interesting. The my one of my favorite shows I ever did was for three people in San Diego. I did yeah. three people in a back room in San Diego. Kind of fun sometimes. Well, it was good because once you know you got the goods, once you know you're like, yeah. okay, I can do comedy. I actually know, and not only can I do comedy, but I regularly perform for lots of people. This is something new, at least, you know, this is like, okay, there's some, this is kind of something interesting. Like there was a long time where all you would do is three people. Correct. And you were like, this is the worst. I can't wait till there's more. There's always something kind of fun about three, four people. Well, because here's the thing, when I was doing that show for those three people, I remember I had a, uh, I, I just started talking to them a little bit and I found out one of the guys is from Minneapolis. I have an entire five minutes based on Minneapolis. Yeah. So I was like, cool, let me just get into that. You get a chance to just really kind of go like, you know what? I'm throwing everything out the window of what I was going to do. Yep. And just going to let them tell me what I should do. And there's, there's something kind of fun about that. Yeah, I loved it. I do think that your point is well made though, that it's like, you'll always be the bottom of the totem pole, unless you're like, Chappelle. Uh, yeah, in which case that's a hell that I I don't I can't even imagine. I I know that seems crazy, but I look at some of the, I started a lot of my friends, I'm sure you feel you have the same thing going on in your life where you're watching people who you're close with start to pop off. Oh yeah. And I'm starting to see people get famous and I'm starting to go, "Wow, what a what a horrible life that could be." Yeah, that's well, a terrible life. Because the demands, it's funny because a lot of people see that and they go, "Oh man, like they they have so much more access." And I go, "Yeah, there's also a lot more expectation around that." Yeah, they're at the airport, people are staring at them asking them for things. It's like, "Listen, if I'm at an airport, all I want to do is, you know, eat a $19 bagel and just let all the cream cheese run in my beard. Like, I don't want anybody to talk to me or look at me. I feel, I, I'm telling you, I could shower six times before going to the airport, and I feel at my lowest, dirtiest point when I'm in an airport. And now people want to take pictures with you. It's like, I just, this is I not, deal with that every day. People yeah. are always like, hey, and I'm like, I'm not Jesse Eisenberg, and then they, you know, <laughs> yeah. leave me yeah. alone. Um, No, I, I, I genuinely, like, I ran into... um. An old, like a, a friend of a friend, but like I known this guy for a little while and ran into him at the airport and literally just afterward texted our mutual friend. I was like, oh God, I wish I had run into the airport. Today. He goes, why? I was like, it's an airport. I'm fucking wearing like, I'm, I was fucking wearing joggers and a, oh, you know, oversized sweatshirt. And I just like, hey, I don't want to do that. I do a three piece suit when I go to the airport. That I should do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, do, I take it all and it's, it's all laced with metal so i have to take every <laughs> yeah every individual piece off it's, yeah I, yeah it's all zippers what's the <laughs> what's the point if you can't do that yeah i agree i i genuinely i, I even when i'm like dressed d half decent in an airport i still just like i feel awful well there's no point to i have heard i love hearing like boomers like i've heard uh like this boomer kind of take of like you know, when we were young, people would dress up to go to the airport. And it's like, why? how could you? Like, what, you have Dre like suits dress up. Yeah, well, this was no 9-11. So none of them had to. There was no security you for anybody to walk off. through. You didn't have to take anything off. Now it's like I'm literally when I go to the airport, I, I, I will go like because I I'm, I'm at a place in my career where all my flights are at 5 a.m. Oh, yeah. So I'm like, yeah, I'm yeah. going to bed in something and I'm waking up and I'm walking out the door in exactly what I'm wearing right now. Yeah, so I am. Uh, I either need to move to the West Side or I need to change my careers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> one of the two things is going to well, happen. Well, so every time I tell a comic I live on the West Side, they're like, "Why?" Oh, I lo I love it out here. I would love to live out here. So come out here. I'm listen. Once I would say the water's warm, but the Pacific's freezing. It's freezing, yeah. yeah and yeah. and that, that's the least interesting part to me about yeah. this place. It sure. really is. Yeah. Once you know, once a couple of these deals go through, you know, I get my own. Oh, uh, you got deals. Yeah, my own energy drink company. Yeah, yeah, off. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, is it called Badawi Wowie? Is uh, that what it's called? It's good. Uh, you know what? That wasn't going to be the name, but I like Badawi Wowie. I'm into it. First uh, tahini and tomato based energy drink ever. It's I love be huge tahini. In, in Turkey. I love tahini. <laughs> 
Dave is so good. It's amazing. Oh yeah. I why do that. we? Why is that not in more things or like available in more places? It's drizzle got, it on everything. I I, I gotta say, it, you know, I'm watching it kind of make its make its. It's coming in. It's coming in a little bit, but I'm sure at some point it'll be taken out by some sort of a big, gluten allergy. Big tahini. It's big tahini. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I'm a big tahini fan. Love it with everything. Uh, I I love a lot of that stuff. I feel like. It's hit or miss when you go to a place like, is this place going to have the goods or not? Oh, yeah. It is very hit or miss. I mean, for me, I'm particular, especially. like You I, probably have your places. I have my place. There's a handful of places. And then there's places that I'll go in and I'll, you know, I, I'll in, in L.A., a lot of places are, uh, a lot of Middle Eastern places are Armenian run. Yes. We don't jive well in terms of our Damn. culinary styles. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So sometimes I'll kick tires a little bit to see who owns the place. Oh, my Lord. It, it is funny when I, because because well, I, w- I was having this conversation, I might have been with Elliot, but I was having this conversation earlier where they were like, yeah, how'd you meet Ramsey? I was like, I met him at that show. And they're like, uh, and what do you know? I was like, I mean, I don't know how his background, I don't know how I got here. I just like him. I, that was enough for me. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. well, uh, the the feeling is mutual and I like being here. And uh, yeah, that was a fun show. Uh, was that was that the one at the, was that your show at the West Side? No, no. That was. I used to have the, a show at West Side. That yeah. was, yeah. No, we're talking about. I the brought shirt you, show. but I brought you onto that because I was just because like, this guy's that. a riot. Yeah. Um. But as I said, when I said off mic, I never get to see you anymore because you're on the road all the time. Yeah. And not to bring it back to food again, but when you're on the road a lot, how are you not? I think if I were on the road, I'd be a thousand pounds. Oh, I'm getting there. I've at least put on like twenty pounds. Dude, in the last you still year. look good to me. I'm very surprised to hear that. I I hold it well. <laughs> you know, like I'm one of these guys. Hold well. I hold weight well. Like yeah, it yeah. just. I, you know, Allah has blessed me with this ability to like every pound in me kind of distributes a little bit, a little evenly. <laughs> it distributes evenly? <laughs> it's pretty good. Wow. You got to teach me how to do that. Um, it's, it's my, listen, I don't, there's not a lot about my body I love. Okay. This is one thing I'm like, you know what? You made me five, five, but you gave me this. We're even. Yeah. Yeah. You, 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 you know what? Uh, he giveth, he taketh away. He, exactly. Um, you know, yeah. that is so funny. I feel like the same four, three, four places. I'm just like, if I'm starting to eat more, I'm like, uh, we're all going to know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> where, where do you see it first? Oh, I, I, for me, where do I see it? In my face. Your face. We, we, but, I, but obviously it's like, it's in my love handles. It'll go right there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I see it in my face pretty easily. The road is brutal too, because so many places, you know, you kind of, there's all like, you know, when you live in a place like L.A., New York, Chicago, Minneapolis, wherever, like these yeah. major cities, everybody kind of makes fun of like Applebee's and whatever. But then you go out on the road and it's like most of it is Applebee's. It's just a lot of Applebee's. It's just Applebee's. It's the only thing that's open till this late or, or you know, clubs, they comedy clubs have this food that is just toxic and god awful. And it's fried. Everything is fried. Everything is, you, you know, w- once I watched bar rescue and i started going to comedy clubs i started seeing all the bar rescue like they're buying crap that freezes well yeah, and does whatever and yep. they can deep fry it and correct there's most comedy clubs i've been to only have a toaster oven in the back they don't even have like a full oven they're just making so you're eating so much crap that it's just impossible to not put the weight on i know some people who really make they make a you know lifestyle choice to they're getting out on the road and they're like i only grocery shop and i'm only doing this and i'm doing that and Are these you people kidding me? They're psychopaths. I can't handle these people. I don't understand because after doing a night of shows, I it's weird. I don't know how to explain this, but I feel like you might understand this. Yeah. After doing a night of shows, I have adrenaline from the shows, but I am exhausted. Yeah. So I am like amped a little bit, but not amped enough to make it like prepare a meal. Absolutely not. And I actually need to eat. For me, I need to if it, if it's great shows, I just did two shows, sold out, everything is great. I need to actually put myself down, right? <laughs> So like I need to like I'll unhinge my jaw and swallow like just nine pounds of food. Oh, just great! Just to go to sleep. That puts you to sleep. Oh, just to go to sleep because otherwise I'm I'm gonna try to do drugs or like you know I just need to go get go down and be tranquilized. In fact, if I could someday when I make it, I'm gonna hire a guy to hit me with a blow dart right after every show. <laughs> so just- that's your dream. That's your dream. If you can make enough money, that's your first hire. Just right in the neck every single show. And of course, I won't know when it's coming. Of Otherwise, I'll be all tense and looking you, you for it. You don't want to be, yeah. I, have, I regularly have this conversation, which is if you like somehow became super successful, fell into all the money in the world, what are the, what are the people you would like hire into your life first? And one of the things I always say as a driver, and my friends are like, why? You don't like driving? I'm like, no, I love napping. And yeah. if I have a driver, I'm going to nap in that back seat all day long oh, a driver hanging around waiting for you all day i just want to nap i Absolutely. just love napping yeah. and that is a good way to be productive during a nap interesting 
Well, it's my first move. I mean, Blow Dork guy for sure. Well, well Blow Dork guy is the top tier. He's top That's tier, number one. No yeah, question yeah. about it. Number two, I'm going to hire a guy for my Airbnb properties because that's immediately where I'm going. I'm pivoting out of comedy as quickly as possible. <laughs> as soon as I get a chance to become a slumlord, it's on. Mm. <laughs> it and I got to tell you, from the minute I met you, I thought slumlord. Slumlord energy. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Guaranteed. I just want it so badly to, I, to just how great. I would just love nothing more than to own three rental properties. And that's it. So just three. Just three. I don't want to be a, I don't want to be a guy who's, I don't want to. It's funny. I don't want much in life. I really don't. Just three rental properties. Just give me three places to go mm -hmm. every yep, day. Yep, yep. And now, now, just be clear. In this fantasy, yeah, are these really netting you a lot, or they're just netting you enough? In my fantasy, I'm getting like two grand a month. What is <laughs> your fantasies are crazy? I love it in my fantasy. I mean, I guess mine isn't much better. I'm just sleeping in the back of a car. But like both of ours are not great right now. Oh, well, let me tell you this. Uh, and so we talked about this a little bit off air, and I'll I'll talk about it here. Yeah, we talked about this. I once got in trouble. I did I did this podcast with a comedian named Kurt Metzger. Yep. And we were joking and we made some inappropriate jokes yep. about the Armenian genocide, which uh, in retrospect, as you go back to it, you go, yeah, okay, fine. Of course, people are going to be offended by that. Yeah. I was going to say that topic in general, a bit of a hot button. Hot button. Yeah. Here's why. Here's where we got pinched, right? Is it was at the beginning of this algorithm stuff. Was, yes. Was it really like when you and I started comedy? How long have you been coming now? Ten years? About? Uh, long time, long, yeah. long time. So if you count, if you count just stand up, I think it's seven. If you go beyond that, it's about twelve. So completely old world that we used to live in, where it was yep. like you put, you make content, you put it up online, and kind of your people see it. Yeah. So your people see it with the context of I who wasn't you putting are. Stuff online. I we didn't. I'm still uncomfortable with putting stuff. I online. put everything online. People now. go like, you got to, and I, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I get it, but I still have this part of my brain that's like. You know, but I was taught that this is not what you're supposed to do. You only put it up online when you have a masterpiece or you have a this. Or no. It's not anymore, obviously. But somebody had put up this clip online where we were making these jokes or whatever. And it, the algorithm, because Kurt works with Kyle Dunnigan. Yeah. And Kyle Dunnigan does these Kardashian videos. He has... He does these videos where he's like, uh, where he's deep fakes the Kardashians and he has oh, like wow. conversations between all, and then they're very popular online, but he's got a huge Armenian following. So the oh, Armenian God. following was fed the Kurt Metzger video of us making fun, but they thought we were having a Zoom call or something. Like they didn't even know what we were doing. They didn't understand the context of the podcast. Dear Lord. I remember to this day seeing an article that was like four, like four people, uh, discussing Armenian genocide on zoom call. Like what, like it was like, not even, it was, it was, they had no context for what we were doing. Now, granted, I'm not, I'm not here to defend the jokes we made or to do yeah, whatever, no, 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 yeah. but at the very minimum, they didn't understand. I'm a middle Eastern guy who comes sure. from a, from a, you know, a, a, a pretty, you know, dark place. And, and, and so either way, Thousands of people were rallying against me. There's a change.org petition out there with like 50,000 signatures to have me like killed or something. I don't even know what they want from it. <laughs> I got to say, I hope that when you go to a comedy club that you have them list that as one of your credits. The change.org <laughs> petition. It's not about it's Dude, 50,000 people? Yeah. I would use that as a credit. When was the last time you got 50,000 people to agree on anything? No, no, it's been a millennium. Yeah. yeah, it's me and Saddam Hussein and a couple of other people who got who uh, have the honor. Yeah, and people that seemingly <laughs> want more uh, grown-up sequels on Netflix. Exactly. Those are, that's, that's all you get, yeah. So, anyways, the reason why I bring this up is because when that happened to me, yeah. I became, I actually had, I got, was deeply traumatized by it. Deeply. D genuinely. Genuinely traumatized by it because you, the human brain is not meant to see that. No. You're not, you're not meant to read so, I read so many people telling me that they wish my mother would die and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, look, I, I'm not meant to hear that from somebody. I'm only meant to hear that from my dad twice under his breath. Sure, you know sure, I mean? sure, of course. Yeah. Not, not like, so because of that, I've become very much like, I do not want that ever again. Give me $2,000 a month. Leave me alone, everybody. <laughs> so is that one of the reasons you don't post online? Because you're like, I don't want the backlash. There's, there is a part of me that is still, like I had to go to therapy over it. Like, I, I mean, I yeah. everybody's got to go to therapy about a lot of things. I was going to say, I'm in it, yeah. But that was a thing that I had to work out and still am working out on some level. Like, wow, like this is part of the, part of the job now is that there can be a, an angry mob of people. And I unfortunately happen to say things that piss people off.
here's the thing. If you look at my comedy, none of it is actually offensive in any capacity. Some of it's been so unfunny I've been offended. And that's fair. Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. take that all day long. For sure. But I use words sometimes that people get all like, if I say something like uh, I have a bit where I say white supremacy and right, I don't say anything else about it. The yeah. whole joke is of whatever you can, but that phrase gets people really fired up. Sure. Where they go, this guy thinks there's a white supremacy problem. Blah, 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 blah. And it's like, well, I don't know, whatever. Either way, anytime I post something and it goes viral, I always feel like I'm get, I'm in trouble. You feel even happy? If even if it's positively viral? I feel in trouble. I'm like, I, uh, I don't turn my phone off. I don't want to look at it. It's, I don't love looking at it, but there are occasionally some clips that go viral of mine where I'm like, this? That happens more often than not, where the clip I go, this one? Yeah, yeah. Really? That happens a lot. I'm like, that? No doubt. That's not a good clip. You still feel you you feel good about it though. Sometimes when something goes viral, you go like, "Oh, that's cool!" Like people are resonating. Or no, whatever. I always am on edge because I'm just like, "Who's coming for me? Who's coming for me?" Yeah, I you know, we're all Tony Soprano. Yeah, yeah. And all of our <laughs> all of yeah, our premises. Yeah, you got Journey playing in the diner. I'm like, "Who's coming? <laughs> Who's coming? Someone's coming. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Who's coming to kill me over my Olive Garden take?" <laughs> I le legitimately, I'm telling you, I I had someone. I can't remember what clip it was. I had someone uh, say, "I know where you live," and listed my cross streets. Oh I mean, yeah, they can do that. I found that out with the with the Armenian thing as well. It's not good. By the way, at that time when all the Armenians wanted my head, um, I needed a used car. And in Los Angeles, oh, if you want to buy a used car, God. you you got to go through Armenians. Yeah, you got to pray <laughs> that you you find the one group that doesn't like YouTube. I was literally going car shopping wearing like a Groucho Marx mustache and glasses. <laughs> like I was. Wearing scarves. I look like Johnny Depp at one place that I went to go get. <laughs> check I out mean, cars. the scarf look, I think, would be good for you. I like the scarves. But oh, I yeah. do feel like you just told me that an article was written about it. Like, I've not Many had. Many articles. I, right. So I've not offended people to that degree. Many articles. I had this I had this hilarious feud for a while because I was just trying to have fun with it at some point. So I had this hilarious feud with, like, Zartunk TV or whatever. Like, some, like, obscure, like, you know. I know what that is. Yeah. <laughs> I was, it was, I was kind of having fun with it at one point where I was feuding with media outlets that you can't even imagine exist you know because they, they cater to such a specific audience and you fuel them i fueled them more oh yeah they're like oh he had God. the nerve to say this to me i was fighting this lawyer who was saying he was gonna sue me like it was crazy man oh it, my god it freaked me out though when it all when the dust settled it freaked me out so much that i i i don't know if i'm even still fully recovered from it did you shut down the podcast no i was i was a guest on the podcast it wasn't even mine oh, it wasn't even yours <laughs> i was just there to say hi <laughs> Did they hit you up being like, I don't know how this happened. We're so sorry. Or like they hit me up to say a lot of things and sorry wasn't one sorry of them. Sorry was not one of them. They, they were, were they were ready to wage war, unfortunately. <laughs> the guys from the podcast were mad at you? No, they were mad at the people who were mad at them. Like oh, 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 oh. and I was kind of just going, Leave me out. I don't care. I'll apologize. I you know, but the, it is you do get into this trap where you're like, What's they want you to apologize, but what do I apologize? Who, no one's going to accept the apology. No, but nobody specifically is mad. At Unless it. you go out there and you're like, listen, I'm going to meet with groups three times a week. I'm going to. Yeah. Know, like I, now I have a full time job. Right. Which is like, no, yes. there's no, no. Yeah. There really isn't. I, yeah, I, 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 I mean, I don't want to get too, too political about all that, but it's kind of just like there are certain groups who, when they get upset, they don't want an apology. They don't. No, no, they don't. Then that's what I learned, right? They're, they don't really want an apology. To be honest with you, they're not really upset for the most part. I mean, there are people who were upset, and anybody who I genuinely upset with anything, yeah. I, I would sincerely apologize from the bottom of my Absolutely. heart. Absolutely. But there were people out there who just wanted blood, and that's fine. We yeah, I always, I, anytime someone's like like that with me, I'm always just like, hey, there are so many better people to go after. Yeah, like, that's what I'm saying. I don't have much to offer you. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I, I, you, know, for you. I'm a nerd in my sweatpants. What do you want from me? I can't do anything for me. Yeah. I'd love to do something for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> you want me to apologize? My mom's been asking me to do that yeah, for years. Yeah, I don't yeah, have yeah. that in me for you right it's, now. Uh, yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's it's fine. We're survived. We're here. I mean, yeah, we're still here. Yeah. Uh, are you ready for the first segment? Let's do it, man. Let's I'm do the excited. first segment. Um, it is called the Newly Friend Game. It's okay. like the newlywed game, but we're friends. Um, though I do think that you'd probably be a good husband. Okay. I would be a great husband. Thank I believe you. that. Absolutely. Horrible boyfriend, great husband. That's sort of my energy. Yeah. I, I think I'm a, a great boyfriend. I'm going to be a mediocre fiance and just a middle of the road husband. That's where I'm at. Okay. I yeah. think that's a, I think it's a good place to be. I'm fine with it. Not even concerned. Um, yeah. and, and by the way, uh, you know, if, if uh, my girlfriend's name is Jess, if, if her mother's listening, just know I am going to try. I just don't think I'm going to succeed. <laughs> um, but uh, so the way this segment works is I ask you a question. You write down your answer. I'm going to see if I can write down the same answer as you. And we'll okay. flip our boards and then we'll do the same question for me. Okay. 
My question for you, so you've been on the road a lot. Yes. Okay. So my question for you is going to be, I'll give you one of two options because you brought up Applebee's. I used to be a server at Applebee's. Were you really? I was a server at Applebee's for two years. So my question for you- Thank I you kinda, for your service. Yeah, <laughs> it was so hard. My question I want to ask you, but you can tell me if this is too specific. I want to ask you, what is your go-to order at Applebee's? Is Did that you too still specific? Got, no, no, no. Do you still got the, like, oh gosh. I know a lot of the menu. Okay. I actually, I actually, this is, okay. I don't know the specific name, but we're going to get, I, I, if we get in the wheelhouse, in I the think wheelhouse. We're fine. I'm ready to go. Okay. Flip your board on one, one two, two three. three, flip it. Uh, chicken tenders with a side of mashed potatoes is what Ramsey said. Wild answer. I, does it come with, it doesn't come with mashed potatoes. They have this deal in, at, at Applebee's. And I wish I didn't know the deal. Two deals. for 20? It's, it's some kind of a deal where it's like for an extra dollar, we give you the, we give you one of the sides. We give you an additional side. Oh, so and you I, get the chicken tenders with French fries and then you and get, get mashed potatoes. I get mashed potatoes. potatoes. I, I go, give me all the carbs. Yeah. Give me well, all me, the carbs. Let me search it up in here. I'm in San Antonio. And the first show wasn't great. Give me all the carbs. I I'm I'm stunned, but also really respect that order. Yeah. Chicken tenders. Now, here's my thing with chicken tenders. I brought up my Palestinian background earlier. I did not grow up eating traditional white people food. Okay. Chicken tenders yeah. and burgers. And so I'm still as an like I grew up eating like falafel and tahini and and, and now as an adult, I love those things. But sure. as a kid, I was always like, can I just have like macaroni you and cheese? You want the thing that you're not being given. You want the thing you can't have. Can I have tater tots? Like, oh, those oh, looks... Tater tots. Who, who, there's no, what's not to love about a tater tot? So as an adult, some of my problems now are that I don't know how to like order a salad. <laughs> I'm like, I just wanted to dip something in ranch. Like I just... I'm still love stuck. Love ranch. I'm stuck. I'm th in my 30s, and I'm like, where, where, where were you? I thought because I thought you were a West Coaster. You born and raised West Coast? I was born and raised in West Coast. My parents are both, um, you know, first generation. Or I'm sorry, I'm first generation. My first generation. I don't they're, know. They're immigrants. I love that you asked me. I'm like, I think I so. Sometimes I don't know who's which. Where's the where does the generation start? Let me check. I have a file on you. I can check it. <laughs> can you I check think that? You, I think you are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my parents both immigrated here in the 80s. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And I don't have any other family who lives here. It's just me. My brothers and them. How many brothers? Two brothers. Are they both this chicken tendery lifestyle like you? Yeah. I mean, I think we're both in the chicken tendery life. I think we're both, you know, because our parents were, were very like, we don't, we don't order takeout. We don't, we just make food because it's cheaper yeah. and it's, yeah. you know, they're very immigrant mentality, which I respect a lot now. Yes. But as a kid, you don't understand that struggle. You just go, give me some tender. You're hung man. up. I want to try the weird, gross stuff that you, that white parents would never feed their kids anymore. <laughs> it would now. Now. Then I was eating. I mean, dude, when I was younger, when we were in middle school, I was eating that like pizza out of a plastic bag, man. Oh, yeah. The pizza out of a plastic boat. Yeah. It's great. Uh, nothing better than that boat. Loved weird it. Weird cheese. Yeah. Oh, I so had good. written for you. I wrote chicken quesadilla wrap. Interesting. Now, what what about me was was giving you chicken quesadilla wrap? Vibes? So I'll tell you. I'll tell you why. Yeah. So uh, I because I've had a lot of this menu. The chicken quesadilla wrap is something that can be scarfed down faster than most things on the menu, but is still actually pretty tasty. Interesting. I'm happy that you gave me this tip because I will do this next time. Yeah. At, I, I, dude, I hated. I mean, that job was a nightmare because here's the thing: you're neither eating good nor are you in the neighborhood. So that whole idea is just nonsense. <laughs> you were sold a bill of goods. The whole sentence is a yeah. lie. I was like, I didn't do anything that that sentence says. You see Applebee's, they go eating good in the neighborhood. I go, I would love to be in a neighborhood where I can eat good. This seems great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's not. Wow. Kind of like America. Yeah. Well, that is. A, it, he, I it never told people you. this. <laughs> Applebee's is, is, is truly just a synonym for America. It symbolized it, the. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's metaphorical of what we face today. <laughs> wow. Do you know the menu well enough that if I said, well, do this question for me, can you can you do this? Um, I'm, I'm trying to remember the, cause I, again, I have like three things. I, three things I would order from there. I don't know if I know the menu. Well so let enough. me make this a little easier okay. for you. Okay. I, for my question and you're going to write it down. Yeah. Don't say it out loud for my question. It is, what is my go-to appetizer order at a dining establishment like an Applebee's? Okay. Okay. So right. that's, that's what your question is going to be. 
Appetizer. What is my appetizer go to? Uh, flip your word on three. One, two, three. Oh my God. Oh my God. It. We did it. Okay. So I said nachos. He wrote nacho slash nacho adjacent. <laughs> Whatever that could possibly be. I, there's, there's other versions of nacho. You know, this nacho y things. I, you know? Everywhere I go, I get nachos. Okay. I love nachos. I'm so happy to have gotten this. I initially thought to myself, could it be a shrimp thing? I go, no, Josh doesn't seem like he would do like a trust, like a seafood at, at, situation. No way. No, no, way. no. I thought mozzarella sticks, but I went, I don't know. He, he could be lactose intolerant. I'm not, he but that's a be. fair guess. A, fair guess. <laughs> a lot of Jews are. A it's lot a of fair Jews guess. Are, you know? So the reason I wrote down mozzarella sticks is because someone said to me the other day, because I brought up that mozzarella sticks are fun. It's fun. I like a mozzarella stick. It's fun. I feel the same thing about nachos. Yeah, yeah. A fun. When you see nachos, everyone's having fun. I love nachos. Uh, but someone goes, would you just eat six string cheeses? Yeah. And I was like, I mean, like, I, like, no, I guess not. Like, what? I would all day long still. I, I was like, they're, they're, I, they were like in a row. Would you eat six string cheeses? I was like, I, I don't know. I was like, why are you doing that? Like, why are you ruining mozzarella sticks? It's true. Like doing that shit. In fairness, and they're also, it's also mischaracterizing what a, it's like, Sick, you're not deep frying them, right? Because once you deep fry a mozzarella steak, you're adding that, like, now you have this. It's different taste. It's kicked different. in your, like, I don't know, the part of your brain that wants, like, that wants carbs fat. and fat. Yeah, and yeah. Stuff. So it's like, get out of here with your judgmentalness. But I eat six, I eat string cheese all day still. Do you eat string cheese? All day. You have it in your fridge right now? I look at it as my, yeah, I look at it as a, I don't know if this is true, but I, I look at it as a healthy snack. I don't think it's unhealthy. Oh, yeah. It's protein and fat. What's, What's wrong with that? that? It's good. I'm, I'm all about the, I've done the keto thing. I like the keto thing, to be honest with you. I, I, okay, we're going to talk about that in a second because I have to talk about when you told me about your keto. Oh, that's situation. right. I'm sure, I'm sure I told you about it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, okay, but so wait. So I want you to finish your thought, though. So you, you've done keto. You like keto, but you're not ketoing now. I'm not ketoing, ketoing now. I like the structure that it adds to my life. Okay. That's what I like about it. People, people don't like how restrictive it is, but to me, if I don't restrict my, I'm like a, an alcoholic sometimes with food, right? Sure. Where it's like, if I don't restrict it, I will just try to swallow everything whole. Yep. yep. And I kind of like just only being able to eat four things and I'll just do it all day long. I am, uh, I've been called a golden retriever because even if I'm full to the point where like, I don't know if you've ever eaten this much, where your stomach is so full it hurts. Yeah. Oh, okay. Long. I've done that. And then if someone puts food in front of me, I'll still nibble at it. Were you fat growing up? Uh, no, I wasn't like the thinnest, but I was, I was not fat. No, I was a chubby, fat little kid growing up. Okay. People used to make my, not people, <laughs> my family, not just randoms, my parents, people in my family be, would, but culturally to them, it's they they think it's funny. Like, it's like, ah, look, he's a chubby little guy. Like, Hey, look how funny he is. Like, but they didn't mean it. They weren't doing a mean spirited. They thing. weren't doing it mean spirited. I think it started to get a little mean spirited at one point. <laughs> and you were like, guys, look, can we wrap it up? Here? Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah, we were yeah. hitting a point. I'm going to go on keto. Like let's. Yeah. yeah. So I developed like basically what I now look back at and realize are eating disorders when I was a kid. And then I joined wrestling, which oh, is wow. like a way to be like, you can have an eating disorder, but like be a man, about, like you could be athletic about it. Yeah, you know? yeah. Now you have an excuse where you need to get to a certain weight. So now you just like fast. You're thinking about weight all day long. As yeah. Like a, as like a 14 year old or whatever. So to this day, I'm still a little, you know, I still have issues with food on some level. So I think we keto, all kind of do. We all do. Yeah, yeah, we all do. That's my, that's where mine come from specifically. Yeah. Um. So the keto thing I like, because I like just being told that I can't eat nine different food categories you know i like yeah, being told yeah. just, you can only eat three things there's like here it. you have meat and you got dairy and, and uh, yeah and butter yeah and figure it out because hey, I, I remember you were you were telling me you go uh you go hey i think i think what you had said was there was pizza in the back and you're like oh, i can't eat any of that i said why you're like i'm in ketosis right now and i was like how do you know you go it's got a smell <laughs> and I was like, what's got a smell? You're like, there's a smell. I can smell. I smell when I'm in ketosis because when yeah, you're yeah. getting into it, it doesn't smell really good. But once you're in it, it smells fine. Yeah. And I was like, what? Hilarious. So do you funny. not remember this? I do. I'm sure I didn't tell you the rest of the story. The rest of the story is that I was peeing on keto strips. Which, what are keto strips? It's a it's like a little strip that detects how many ketones are in your urine. Oh, is that a you want a lot or you don't want a you lot? You want a lot. Okay, got it. The higher they are, but you can all but then there's also the the other elements which is you start to smell a certain way. You start to not good. It's not good. Even it's very metallic. When you're all fully in ketosis. Yeah, ketone, acetone, like it, I don't know what the tone word means. Sure, I don't know what any of them meant. And it smells. Well, I feel like this is as good a time as any to go to the lightning round. Are Let's you ready it. for it? Let's do it. 
So the lightning round, it's five questions. They're fast questions. They do not at all have to be fast answers, okay. but they're just the five final questions we end every episode with. All right. Excited. Uh, I'd like to use an index card. It makes me feel like a late night talk show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like an index it. card too. Yeah, it feels good. Uh, question one, what is a favorite ritual of yours? So mine is brewing tea. What would be one of yours? I like drinking an energy drink first thing in the morning. <laughs> First, are, you, are we saying like you get out of bed, walk to the fridge, and you pop an energy drink? I get out of bed. Actually, you know what? Thank you for 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 the the clarification request. I go to Seven Eleven. I like you don't keep up. them in the you don't keep them in the house. I understand the efficiency element that you're talking about, but uh-huh. I love having something to do first thing in the morning and okay. going. You work at the comedy store, which has some late nights. What hour of the day are we waking up and just rolling over to 7-Eleven? Lately, it's been real bad. It's been around noon because okay. I get home at like 3.30, 4 I think it's sometimes. a little justified to be waking up at noon if you're getting home at 3.30. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so getting up around noon and yeah, I like rural. I don't like being home, which okay. says a lot about, I think, maybe my living situation, maybe my personality. Yeah. So I love g- just going someplace. Which is great. Yeah. I think it's great. Uh, question two, what is a running bit you have with a friend or partner that makes you laugh? I do this running gag with my friend Chris Estrada, who I open for. Yeah, lovely uh, guy. Chris, yeah. he, Him and I uh, love to talk about... <laughs> we'd like to talk about uh, being comedy entrepreneurs. Jesus. <laughs> so we have a, 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 ga- a bit where he has his own comedy company that he has started called Naughty Comedy LLC. Yeah. Uh, and I have my comedy company, which is Rascal Humor Enterprises. And it is not enterprises. Is yes, it? and we're very serious, and we love to talk very serious about our about our comedy endeavors. Yeah. So we'll talk about like <laughs> it's stupid. It's just, this is not funny to anybody but Chris and I. I love it. <laughs> so we'll just we'll have conversations like we like having like. Um, you know, we'll talk about a, we'll talk, you know, he'll do a, I'll do a, jo- a new joke or something. And he'll go, that's really great, man. That had naughty comedy written all over oh it. Oh my like, God. We're about that. We're thinking about acquiring some of that, some of those jokes. Oh my Lord. <laughs> Things like that. It's so stupid. It's not funny to anybody. No, I, I love it. it. I love it. Um, It is funny because I, because I, I've known Chris for quite a while. I could see him being very genuine, even within the joke, being genuine, being like, I feel like that's really our brand. Yes. That's yeah. Our yeah. Brand. Now here's a good run. Can I do a re- here's a recurring gag I do for people. This is for folks in the service industry. Please. Sometimes I'll, people will tip me money, right? Sometimes they'll they'll give me. You know, I work at the comedy store. And they'll give me a two dollar bill. Here's a great gag if somebody ever tips you because you know people do that sometimes. You well, because they want you to remember them and they think it's cool. Mm. Yeah, here's two dollars. Like, oh, here's my my recurring gag is whenever they give me the two dollar bill, I ask if they want change. Oh my god. That's my recurring gag. Does it do? Does anyone ever get offended? I want them to be offended. But Give me don't. more than two dollars. Well, I don't sure. care that Thomas Jefferson was on this thing. Was Thomas Jefferson on the two? <laughs> yeah, he's on the two. You never really want to be on the you, two. You don't want to be on the two. No one's getting the two. Give me a five. Yeah, that's you know, well, that's where the five. With should. inflation, give me a five. We don't care about the, the two. inflation. They should make a seven. Yeah, a great. Right, thank you. All right, you heard it here first, everyone. The seven dollar bill. bill. <laughs> uh, question three: Can you do an impression of one or both of your parents? And it doesn't have to be good. The worse, the better. I unfortunately. Uh, I can't, I cannot, I'm trying to think, what would something my father say? Uh, my dad loves Saddam Hussein. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wow, that's quite, a, that's quite an opener. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he loves Saddam Hussein. Because he's, to him, to my father, yeah. Saddam was the first guy to ever get canceled in his world. That's an interesting way to, I'm trying to think of that. To him, he goes, Saddam was like a great guy. Yeah, yeah. And all, And then they all turned on him. And they all decided that everything he was doing was bad. And blah, blah. Which was true. Your dad sounds like a comic. There's a very comics way of viewing this. He he really does. So he's got a lot of like Adams. He's a good. They say things on him, and he's uh, he's good though. He's good to us. <laughs> he's good. To, he's good to the rock. No, the, the rock is bad now. Look at the rock. He's yeah. bad now. My dad's like Seinfeld, but Arab I was about and- <laughs> to say yeah. he's an Arab Seinfeld. I mean, that is exactly what he sounds like. Yeah. He's like, yeah, what's the deal? Yeah, you know, very- why, why are they doing this? <laughs> yeah. um, no, that- com- no, no uh, uh, impression of my father is complete without a Saddam Hussein reference. He uh, loves the guy. Listen, bless his, bless his heart. Your father's not. Yeah. I, I have no comments on Saddam. <laughs> not, yeah. Um, question four. Have you ever experienced imposter syndrome? And if so, is there a moment that sticks with you? I, I feel like um, I feel like I experience imposter syndrome pretty much every single day. Um, every day when you go to 7-Eleven, you're like, I don't belong I don't, here. There's no, I haven't earned this. No, no, there's not every single, every paycheck I get that, mm. that I feel is more than I deserved. I, uh, you know, did a commercial for Amazon or whatever. Oh, like, I didn't see that. Congratulations. You, uh, it's 
it's fine. I, 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 I look at it and I just immediately go like, I should just cash this and just give it to people. Like I remember, I remember from getting, uh, you know, again, it's not a check. It's like, I don't know, 1800 bucks or whatever. Like sure. What a, what a, what a good, honest person would get in a week or, you know, whatever, two weeks sometimes yeah, for yeah. a job. And I remember just going like, I can't like, how can I accept this money? By the way, taxes are not deducted. Like I'm once everything is said and done, I yeah. have netted nine hundred dollars. I was gonna say, yeah, <laughs> after taxes, it's like you, you could buy your energy drink and that's yeah. kind of then you gotta wait. <laughs> but I still just I every single time I do anything, I feel an immense amount of imposter syndrome. Are you not are you plagued by it as well? All every, all the time. Yeah. But what's interesting is like someone said to me recently that and this is gonna sound negative and it's not meant to, but what they said to me is it if you are viewing yourself as not deserving of the opportunities that you're getting, you're viewing those opportunities as a pinnacle when really you should be looking to such bigger horizons and seeing the things that you're getting in these moments as smaller stepping stones to be there. Which is 100% true. Um, my final question for you, uh, question five, what is uh, your favorite tea? And if not tea, what is your favorite comfort? Uh, my favorite tea is Monster Energy Drink. Does they... <laughs> no, they do not make a tea. They do make a tea. It's oh, called, my God. It's called Rehab. Oh, and God. it is like a kind of a brisk iced tea sort of type of Is this jam. true? This is 100%. 100% true. Well, of course, the real ones out there listening to the show are going to know exactly what I'm talking about. I cannot believe this. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's a delicious, delicious beverage. And it is actually how I start off a lot of my mornings. Very, it's, um, you know, kind of a lemony iced tea kind of, kind of vibe. Like brisk. Like, like brisk. brisk. Oh, absolutely. Except loaded with, you know, taurine. way too much caffeine and taurine and xanthex gum or whatever xanthum gum yeah or... xanthum gum how is that is this as caffeinated as a cup of coffee it's about two cups of coffee three cups of coffee if they're pouring them weak i i can't even how I crush are you four a day how, no problem that can't be true it's one thousand percent true how much sleep do you get in a day uh i do about six seven hours i mean at this point it doesn't affect me anymore right? that's really problematic i mean people talk about like i talk i talk to people who are like if i drink yeah, a cup of tea at 4 p.m. I'm up all night. I have a Red Bull at 12 midnight. No problem. I sleep by three. I can't. I can't. I'm one of the other people that you just named. I envy you people. You I think don't you want feel to. more. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I think I could literally walk into a rake right now. And I don't know if I feel it. I, I feel too much. I, I am told that I am sensitive enough for both of us in my relationship. That's probably you know, I get that. I get that vibe from you. I cry all the time. I'm a big crier. I love yeah. it. Yeah. I love it. Big on the, the cries. The opposite is the worst. Yeah. Do, so you cry also. I do not cry. I'll cry every once in a while. Okay. And it's a bad and I feel ashamed and it's Oh no, I love it. Yeah. It's been a long time though. I mean, it's once a year for me, maybe. More. I mean, you're in therapy. I went in therapy, like I don't cry in therapy ever, but I've said to him before, he's like, you know, I would tell people like, Don't be scared of your emotions, but I know you're not. And I was like, No, no, no. <laughs> he's like, Josh, you should be a little scared of your emotions. Yeah, he's like, pull back a hint. Well, just, he's just like, you know, maybe, of... maybe just like kind of just just tighten it up a little bit. Yeah. And I was like, no, no, I'm going to keep crying. Um, but that's as good a time as any, man. Thank you so much for coming. I, I, I really, really loved having you on. I had a great time. Thank you very much for having me, man. That was Ramsey Bedali. You can follow him at Ramsbad on Instagram and Twitter and at Ramdog with three Gs on TikTok. We'll be back next week. So until then, happy steeping. Does your partner go, something's up? I you you smell different. You know, they I, the person whom I was dating at the time never said anything to me, but I'm sure she she was a very polite, wonderful young lady. Did you ever <laughs> just want to go, listen, I know that you know that something smells different here. I think now we I should probably link up with her and, and <laughs> have that honest conversation. <laughs>